Gentlemen's never fails, but we interrupt this honey-do list. Good thing it's aluminum. Whoopsie. To bring you... Ah, uh, they never fails, but you get a skookum choocher thrives on abuse and neglect. I'm talking about this airless paint sprayer built for painters. You ever seen a painter what wasn't a partier? <laughs> Working. It is the curse of the party in class. And you give her the baby doll, she come up, they got but 200 hours of uh, never been maintained. I just put this uh, dingus end in a bucket of water and, and so forth. And she never fails to chooch right up until you give it to the wife. Me and the missus, we love the paint business. As wife or we hire it out, generally. Uh, you got some stuff to do around the farmstead here. So, <laughs> well, being older, wiser, and slightly fluffier, we took a pact that if and we ever paint it together, we just go ahead and get a divorce. I'm more of the uh, Ritchie Brothers slop and bucket. Yeah, thick and quick and thick. That's my motto. She's quite a bit more fastidious. Yeah, that's the three character. I bet you this pump is right full of schmoo. Now, I will say this airless sprayer, fantastic. It goes through paint like a hot dam, however. You use lots of paint, but you get her on quick. What this is and what it do, other than in the long run save you on liar bills, is an airless sprayer. And it takes electrical energy, converts it into mechanical energy, which converts it into hydraulic energy. This thing will put out 3,000 pissies, so you don't need any air for spraying your paint. And what it does, it's just a reciprocating dingle arm. It's a very simple pump, very smart. I think it's 120 volts AC, 8 amperes. No, I did it the wrong way there. It was up already. Uh, roughly, root mean square being what it is, roughly 800 watts of painting power. And you can see here, maybe you can't, there's the spindle down in there. That's on the motor shaft. That spins that bull gear. That bull gear has an eccentric cam attached to a bearing, and that bearing rides on a pistone. Pistone reciprocates back and fro, to and forth, and essentially pumps it. Now, you can have a very simple pumping element just with two check balls and a relief valve in this case, a, a adjustable relief valve. So what I'm thinking is that uh, some schmoo got in there and set the check balls so they no longer check. Now, this here is enough to make it worth its weight in gold. Is that it's mighty serviceable. The whole pumping element comes over, replaceable and so forth. Here you get a better look at the arrangement internals. On this little safety switch, I believe, is just a jumper and that just uh, shuts her down in case. But you get a better look there at the pinion. Since we got her open, we're going to go ahead and put some molybdenum disulfide. Of course, that takes the high-speed motor shaft and converts it into low-speed, high torque of the cam. And then we have some locating dowels there. Nice, big beefy we're taking out looks like the outlet might be the yeah there's a bit of sh if you'd focus you fuck a bit of schmoo in there which would prevent it from sealing properly and what we're seeing is on the inlet it'll pump water but it won't pump paint and also even the water there's some backflow in this direction you can see it pulsating and normally when it's uh, working properly this pulsates good, and this is the outlet. This is just the overflow, and there's lots of flow out of the overflow. Even with the less viscous water, there's very little flow out of the overflow. There's something wrong, I would say, on the inlet side of the pump. Very likely, there's a fine part stack up, or at the very least, a manual written in Mexican. However, that's kind of like cheating. There's a heavy spring behind that so I don't want it to go springing springing oh beautiful beautiful so that's always nice when they put enough threads to take up the preload on the spring so it doesn't fly out at you now you have a look at that quite a bit of schmoo there there's no additional porting in this little valve or in the body so this has to be some sort of prime function it bears against that big check ball 
on the inlet side. That's got to be some sort of priming function. It does have a pictogram of a pokey finger pezzing le piton. So the inlet check ball is in this cartridge. Huh. We'll pop that out and you can see there's a fair bit of schmoo. I'm no expert on painting, but in the vernacular of the day, <laughs> there's your trouble, ma'am. This is fantastic. It's sublime in its simplicity. There's no mechanical contrivance to control the ultimate pressure. What it is instead is an adjustable pressure switch. Sends a signal to turn off the motor. Once that uh, pressure ka chunk ka chunks the switch changes state and opens up the motor contacts. You don't get any. <laughs> so simple. Also, in order to purge it here, we have that little purge valve. Just opens up, just unseats that ball. Dead nuts. Simple. And then, in order to cycle through, say you got a different color of paint or whatever, you got to clean it out. We just got a simple on-off valve here. And when we open it up, of course, no flow will go to the gun because there's higher uh, resistance to that flow. It all goes short circuit back to tank, back to the bucket. And then when we actually want to paint, don't lose your ball. When you actually want to paint, you just close it off. And then the fluid's got no other where to go, but the gun. I mean, it's, it's yeah, love it. Fantastic, beefy, simple. The way things ought to be. Got her back together. And it appears as though we solved the problem. However, no job is complete without a final test. And depending on the disposition of the client, which in this case <laughs> ain't good, we have to thoroughly test this. How are we going to do that? All this stuff. This appears the outlet is some sort of oddball reverse cone OFRS, which would make it inch standard thread, probably three eighths, uh, the same as a dash six GIC, whatever thread form that is, it escapes me right now. And then we'll need a sort of plug in there. Weird flex, but okay. Uh, yeah, some sort of oddball metric. Don't quite fit, but you can wiggle a little bit. So we'll take a hard pass on the hex-shaped cap bruise on your forehead to match the mushroom-shaped one. Uh, what we will do, we still need some resistance to flow. We'll stick an ear hole plugger in there and then kind of wiggle this on. And we'll, we'll at least have enough resistance so that we can get it to uh, pump into the outlet. Not to scandalize you, but I whipped out the pumping element. You can see a bit of heat discoloration there, but no gouges, nothing like that. So we'll just clean off the tip, stick her back in. I had the kilowatt hooked up here and we're gonna run her in watts. We'll flash it up. Crazy buckets, paint every words, check, contact. How's that for another job? Well, done. Also set up wise for a night on the town with your wife's fancy friends. Never judge a man till you walked a mile in his two inch pumps. I got new respect for looking down the barrel. Look, it's a good way to ruin a perfectly good hat.